Hello, and welcome to Tykes TV. Uh, preview for Peterborough game coming up, and today I've got Jacob on. So, Jacob from Peterborough, welcome. Appreciate you taking time out. Uh, yeah, I mean, people what's been watching will know that uh, every time Peterborough play, I get Jacob on all my way. We do uh, season predictions and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, it's more or less you know coming up to Christmas New Year, half time at season kind of thing, Jacob. Um, I, you know, we both missed out on, you know, the, the final kind of thing, the uh, championship. But how do you see that your season's gone up to now? I mean, you're sitting second, I believe. So mm -hmm. has, has it been up, up to now? Absolutely unreal. Because um, at the start of the season, I predicted us, when we did our prediction video, I said we'd finish ninth because we're going down the young route. Um, mm. And this season... Every, every time we've only lost one in 16 games i think and that was wigging away and we should have beaten them but yeah the way we play football and the way darren ferguson's got us playing football it's just a joy to watch because in some games we've absolutely smashed teams we've smashed cambridge 5-0 we smashed oh, i can't remember who else we smashed burton 4-0 um we beat shrewsbury away we beat Fleetwood away but we've been we're, we're getting we're creating so many chances in their games, which is leading us to getting so many goals. With this, that's why we're top scorers in the league. So hmm. it's been a great season though, so far. But January could be absolutely, it's absolutely massive for us because we could lose Peter Kiyosa, our captain, who's come on loan from Rotherham in the summer. He's been absolutely unreal. His leadership qualities as a right as a right back are absolutely brilliant. We, we might lose Ronnie Edwards, of course. You thought you probably thought in the summer you'd have probably left Posh by now, but mm. he's been absolutely unreal again, and he deserves his move out in January of the summer. Um, and then we could cross what well, we could lose Tark Harris, but he's not been playing them the, the whole season because with Jono, he started the season okay, but then since Ricky has come into a striker, he's, he's just offered more. He's not offered more goals, he's offered more work rate, more pressing, more. And that's just suited our style a bit better because he works more hard. So John will probably leave as well, but we definitely need a striker coming in the January transfer. And I think if we get that and we keep like play like Kyoso Edwards, I, I don't see why we can't go for top two. Yeah, uh, uh, it, it, it's interesting, Matt, because when obviously we we lost at Wembley uh, and then there were some changes made. We lost such as Mad Anderson, Kitchen, Brad Collins, Mike Luffy Sen had gone. We took uh, yeah, to Swansea and all since been sacked from Swansea. So it like a bit of a, a rejig. We've got some players in, oh, if I'm being fair, unknown players uh, from like lower leagues. Um, and we've... <sighs> The style of play that we're playing at home is different to what we're playing away for some reason. I don't know if it's pressure or if it's the kind of style, but Collins at home seems to like to play a nice possession-based football, which is fine. I totally get that. But when you haven't got the players or the players have been drilled into last season or two, I press, I tempo, close down, it were a bit of, well, what's going on here at home? It was a bit alien to fans. Um, fans were like, I won't get us again on players back to such, but we're getting frustrated at the way we're playing. Um, or times up, you think just play that, you know, killer ball. And came with a sat passing sideways or back and like mm, at home. Um, I think is worst the worst game I've seen at home for me this season was against Portsmouth, and we all know what Portsmouth have done this season. I mean, going on a right run, but when we were three, three nil down at half time and. How will I? This is, you know, one more goal and it could be a cricket score here. But look at it, the second half, it gone from the three at the back and he played a 4 4 2 or a 4, you know, 2 2 wingers kind of thing. And we got back into it when we just missed out 3 2. A lot's been made about as FA Cup debacle, uh, the ineligible player. So that were a, a bit of swill to uh, swallow. But now the CEO has gone, it seems to be like a, a fresh belief at club because a lot of fans were like, with the CEO, it were acting too, it were getting too involved in the transfer side of players. Now Bobby Assel, who's been a bounce player from Mansfield for donkey's years and is in academy setup, a lot of bounce fans are like thinking like, new year, new beginning, we, we, we could be there. 
we're, we're just outside of uh, playoffs. I'm looking at the table right now with Stevenage. Um, I mean, we had, you know, we won Stevenage and then obviously we won against Park Bell. So for me, going into January and a lot to be made about this is that we didn't beat, I, I don't think we've beaten a, a team in top 10 until the Stevenage game. We lost to such as like sports for Bolton, Derby, Oxford. You know, we lost a, a team like that. Now we're coming up against Peterborough. And I would happily snap your hands off for Clark Harris to be a bounder player because there's Devante Cole, and it's, I think he's got 13, 14 goals, but his confidence seems to have been gone. Is that a conscious to end of the season? He just um, he's just going through a patch at minute where he's not really, it's a miss, he's on cold. Now, I don't know if he's got his head turned elsewhere in January. But for me, I'd, I mean, Clark Harris, I mean, you. I always look at Clark Harris, what he's done for Pete, uh, Pete before, over the last couple of seasons. He's always been being in double figures. And I'm surprised he ain't got a move. And if possibility came about, I'd take out Clark Harris. Um, interesting coming into the game because I know when Pete came to Barnsley last season, I think it was last home game of the season, your tour is another one. Uh, the, the pace that you'd had, the movement up front, has that still, is that still kind of, I mean, you said your people are still like creating chances. Has it been something that you think Ferguson has really worked on this, like creating the chances and creating the space? Is it still down the wings or is it more direct kind of play that you're doing, Jacob? No, not direct. Because how we play is we get play out from the back, centre backs to the full backs, and then we keep moving in the lovely like one two football. Hmm. So I think. Mason Clark and Pocker, our wingers, are so important for us because they've got everything you want from Premier League. Well, Mason Clark should realistically should be in the Premier League, playing Premier League, because from oh. the last season when we signed him, we thought he was going to be a non league, another non league gem we signed from like hmm. Barney, because they're pretty much, we, that's the club we got Edwards from, Taylor from, and they've gone on, to, and Taylor's gone on to a bigger club. Mason Clark will, will be the same, I'd imagine. So, yeah, I think. The front four we've got this season with Mason Clark, Randall Poku and Ricky have been all creating chances, all been getting goals and assists, and that's come from clinical clinical finishing and just just uh, just good like oh, what's the word? Are they just communication connections? Right? Yeah. Because with Randall, the past two seasons he's of course he came from extras like a young twenty one year old Nick. This season, it's just fully grown, fully grown man. Confidence is just been at, right, right up there. It's pleased to see him doing well because he's an absolute on his day. He could be one of the best players in that league because of his mm-hmm. vision, his his passing. He could be one of the best tackling fields in the league. If not, he could. He actually is. So, yeah. As as Ferguson tried to keep the same start in eleven, as it as he altered yes. much in yes. personal. See, that's different with Barnes, you see. Last, last seven games, we've played the same start 11 in a row. So, right. I wonder if he freshens up for Friday or not. Because after you, we got Derby away, which is an absolutely massive game. So, mm. um, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, same team for the past seven games. It'd be right. front forward, stay the same. But ideally, from on the Friday, I'd like to see a striker change. But that, that could be the only change we probably make for Friday's game. But yeah, ev- ev- yeah. He keeps the same team a lot because from our start eleven to our bench, which the bench we have a few good players like Clark Harris not even getting in the team. We've mm. got two times gold uh, golden boot winner, but he doesn't feel our style of play. That's why he's not getting in. So we have to call it on the bench, but he's keeping the starting eleven because how well we're performing. Yeah, that's true. I mean that, that that's quite different with with Barnsley as well, is that complete opposite is that we seem to be we're lucky if we get like two games in on one after the other with the same start eleven and that's like frustrating because you think, you know, yeah, you're gonna get a odd injury or suspension, but when there's no need for it, you think, oh, why are you changing that? It's like a winning team or we're on back run dump. And I get where his life it's just coming up, especially for Christmas period. So I, I kinda of expect him to make some more changes come Peterborough game. Um, you know, because he's coming up thick and fast, which I totally get about you know, footballs and that, but Building up to this, especially when there's like you got the international breaks and the ever week off, I'm thinking, hey, don't don't really alter it unless you've you know 
a player's got an injury or a knock. One player that I'm, I'm pleased is back for me personally, personal point, is Luke Connell. So bad we missed him. And it's made such a difference in my arm midfield. A lot of play goes through him. You've got back like midfield trio now. First time it happened a couple of weeks ago. First time this has happened since last season is that he's got Luke Connell, Herbie Kane, and Phillips heading back uh, front. And it's like the midfield trio from last season, which did so well. It's only just happened recently in the last couple of weeks. And I'm thinking if we could have started off like that, probably some of these games that we've lost at home, in, you know, or um, drawn at home, is we might have got a win out of that. And like I said, as a waveform, for me, it's like we were freeing up against Port Vale yesterday and John McAtee. Some of the goals have been is hitting. It's like unbelievable chips, lobs. He's not a free to ever go. And unfortunate for me, but it's not a bounds. Of, it's not our bound of play. If you know what I mean, he's on loan from Luton Town. So I could see any time, such like uh, Roberts from Middlesbrough. He could rumours going about. He could get recalled back. And I think that could be January. Could be very important for us whether we keep him for end of season. Or we can time up on a contract, you know, because we're out of contract. Or whether they like say, no, we want him back and we want him to be playing in Championship now rather than League One uh, to see if he can get a bit more pound notes on his value. So, I, I, personally, I I think Barnsley is still probably three. I'd like to have three players in, in its side. I'd like Roberts, who was on loan at Middlesbrough, to get signed up permanently. I still think we need another centre back. And for me, I, I want another, I want another striker because I'm still not convinced that Devante Cole, he'll be our player, whether it be January or end of the season. I think he will go. So I would rather get someone in place like now. Again, whether that's you know possible because we all know that January comes round and people put X amount of pounds on them and it's always last minute. But that's interesting to see that Peterborough are they approach game and that's what I think Barnsley have been missing a bit certain partnerships so going into Peter game for me I think our players need to be on that same wavelength I, you said that you'd probably make a striker change uh, for the game on Friday who would you change and, and why would you change J- uh, Jacob? The only change I'd make on Friday is Mother Sill um, we signed him from Chelsea in the summer because we played uh, Papa John's trophy game against Chelsea in the last year and he was absolutely amazing. Scored two goals. It's a real threat. And McAlphany somehow got him in um, on deadline day, I think. So I'd like of course I'm not all posh fans, I just wanted him to have a go because he so that start of the season didn't have the match fitness. So now he's got the match fitness and I think I personally think he needs about seventy minutes in a proper league one match because we need to, he needs to show what he's about. We've signed him for a reason. He, he he's probably our replacement for John though. So he needs to prop, he needs to start a game to show how good he is, and if if he if he contributes against if he plays against Barnsley, then he he'll be our number nine. But I I, I doubt he'll I doubt he'll start Mo Sill, but I I think he should play. So I think for for Barnsley the changes, what could he make? Why I would like to see Cosgrove. Starting, this might be a bit controversial for some of the Barnsley fans. I'd like to see Cosgrove start in front of Devante Cole because I think when Cosgrove comes on, he offers that bit more power and muscle up front. McAtee, a lot of people have said he's not a striker, he's more of a, a cent, you know, central attacking midfielder where you've got a Phillips fear. So while everybody's scoring goals and goals, but he's scoring, I'd, I'd keep McAtee in. Rest at side, I wouldn't really change out as regards, you know, I want that continuity, I want players to make that understanding. I don't think any players picked up any injuries. In fact, I think the substitutes he made against Port Vale, he took them off pretty early to, you know, thinking 3 0 were enough, keeping in mind for the Peace Brigade coming up. But in a way, it had a detrimental effect because he didn't take his foot off at gas, men up, you know, Port Vale ended up scoring two goals. So, end of, day, end of the game, a bit of a squeaky bum tag light. We've got a bit, uh, you know, we had a momentum there. But all of a sudden, we've got a way we win just rather than being make it comfortable. Do you think Peterborough? I, I, I can't see him, but do you think Peterborough will approach this game against Barnes any differently, or do you think they'll he'll just play as it is? Well, we've, we've lost one at home this year, so 
I, I say good luck to you lot because um, nah, at Iron we're very strong and we, we, we just play the same way we do in, in away games. We just Maybe away games would just set us up a bit more like tactical defensively, but we still don't we're still dominating games away from home, creating lots of chances. But yeah, I I at home I would honestly back us to to be played the same way. And I if I was giving you a one to watch, I'd say Mason Clark. He's got everything and that and of course he's bullied basically most right backs in League One this season. I don't know who your right back is, but Who's your right back? Well, we keep chopping and changing it. So, the last couple of games, it's been O'Keefe, which has been fine. Yeah. But Ben is liable to make a, a change and put, like, Barry Cotter in. So, it's like, and this, is, and this, and this is what I'm saying, is, like, the players need to be playing a good handful of games to get that understanding of position. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Mason Clark because last season, when I know we were up at Oakwell, the, the amount of wing, the, the, the spaces you were running into, the pace... And I'm like, oh, yeah. He's got and pace, that's, that's strength, a worry for me. dribbling, that's a worry. quick. So good player. Such a, he's, he's better than Sricky Dembele. And he was good for us. Oh, yeah. I remember him, yeah. I remember him. And that's my worry. This is my one worry going to Peterborough, is that the wing-backs, we always seem to like leave Lake as a space it back. More right side than I said left, because uh, Cadden, Stroke, Styles again. Always in an art at time. You don't know who's going to be playing there. And the one worry I've got at Barnsley at the moment, and it's happened the last couple of games, and it's happened against Stevenage, it's happened against uh, Port Vale, is that we're slow to react at second ball when it comes in. And the amount of times a cross has been coming and keepers made a save or a parry, and our players have been like ball watching. We haven't been quick enough to react to get the boat for it and just clear it. It's like, too slow, and I think you can't do that, especially when you're up against teams here. What have got players in the box? You need to be on your toes. Ball comes in, goalkeeper's made a save, he's pushed it to one side, cleared it. And that's happened in the last couple of games now. And I'm thinking the amount of chances that you're creating, the pace that you're going to be creating our wing backs, there's a potential there that our back three are going to be having their work cut out. And I think if we go to Peterborough. And come away with a draw. I think we've got. I'll take that all day. If you said Neil, there's a draw here. I'll take that now. I will take it now. That all day long. Honestly, God, I will take a draw all day long now. Because I'm looking at Peterborough. I like what you just said. Be your own form. Well, I mean, we're very strong. Very strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, score prediction. It's going to be a good one now. Um, score predictions, uh, Jacob. What what are you going for, mate? Well. Of course, with that draw with Reading, prior prior to that, we we won the last three games. We beat Oxford mm. three, and we beat Fleetwood, and we beat Shrewsbury. Reading was a bit of a players looked a bit. Hmm. Wait, yeah, okay. yeah. Players looked a bit more tired, but they they're young lads. They're gonna they're gonna be more fitter than older players. If like you've got in your team, if for example. Cole's like 30, I think. So um I back us I think we'll win this game. Um I think it'll be a better reaction from the players. I think unfortunately, but I think we're gonna dominate you. Like we dominated Reading, but we just didn't win. We just didn't take the chances and we got a bit cheated by ref. But I'm gonna say mm. I'm gonna say a 3-1 Bosch. I think our attack's gonna be too strong. I think this is a game where we know we have to win because we've got Derby next game. So I think the players will be up for it, and I think I think our attack will be so strong for you. Sorry, sorry, Neil. No, it's fair. No fair comment, mate. I mean, yeah, I remember last season when you came to it. Well, uh, and again, what I saw there with pace and everything like that. I'm thinking, wow, it, it was. I, I was well. I saw you going into uh, the semi final on full confidence. And I'm thinking, play like that. You've you've hit oh, the confidence button, but you hit the confidence button. So moving on from that. And what I've seen from you from last season to this season, Ferguson, you, you've like built on that and you've like carried on that momentum. You haven't really altered the style of play. Mm. Whereas Collins has come in and you're not manager and again is trying to implement certain things. Fine, I get that. But when I think a lot of Bounds fans' expectations are, well, we met playoffs last season, why can't we do it again? So that's that extra pressure on him straight away. I 
I'm going to go 1-1, one, one, and that's probably my heart rather than my head. Um, I'm not taking it away from Peterborough. You know, you've got Vera on Merit in your own form, second to none. But I just think that, I think Posh will come out on it. You know, I think they will win. Uh, but I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. I just thought that our defence is switched on and turned on and is midfield. I think one player to look out for, for me, was going to be instrumental in this, is Luke O'Connor. If he can get the ball, pick it up in defensive midfield and start spreading it, which he has been doing, I think if he starts like looking for key passes and back to such as Phillips or Herbie Kane or McAtee, that's fine. But I think if you're if you're can like not single players, certain players out, but a, a James for Barnes, it'd be like Luke O'Connell. Uh McAtee obviously can has been hitting him, his confidence is up there as well. But going to Peterborough, uh, I'm gonna go one one. And that's probably been too kind to balance, if I'm being fair. But I think, if it, you know, a point away, someone like Peter, it'd be a result for Barnsley. But I get where you're coming from, you know, 3-1. Uh, I, I won't say, you know, I won't say it's out of, out of realms at all. you got to think yeah. as well, you're a bigger club than us. So. Yeah, I, I get that. Big, Reggie are a bigger club than us. And they, when they were celebrating, they drew a lock of win yesterday, mm. so... I mean that's that's how good we've been this season. You're showing we're saying against bigger clubs that we're getting points against them, and they're celebrating it like a, like they've won the league or something. Yeah, I, I mean, we're not that big of a club. I, and I think that's like disrespectful and all when you see such a like Redmond celebrating back like it, like it's just said of the <clears> league. It's like for me, you've got to respect the opposition. It's like Peterborough. You've got to respect Peterborough. Um, I mean, we had it. You know, we had it in FA Cup against Arsham where they, they came and, and they drew three apiece. So. Again, I mean, it's a pretty strong side out there. You've got to respect the opponents of the play. And you look at you look at league table and it don't lie. It's where people are or where teams are, sorry. So you look at Ports of Peterborough, Bolton, Derby. They haven't got there by a fluke up to now. It's, you know, we've, you've had to grind out some results. There's some dodgy refs, which I think everybody in League One does. Um, oh. So again, you've got to, you know, you've got to take rough with smooth kind of thing. But looking at the table as it is like now, you know, I think it like come this tap point of season. I don't know if you agree or disagree with this, Jacob. I think this point of season, like now, you've got a rough idea. Always going to be fighting out for top two. Always going to be fighting for playoffs, like we said in predictions. And always going to be fighting for relegation. I think as it is now, you can more or less see. I think if you go down to probably tenth to like third, you can see them teams kind of fighting it out. Mm. And then probably first to third. Probably fighting it out or first to far fighting it out for the top two. Thing is, though, everyone, uh, even top teams are going to drop points. Like Portsmouth lost yesterday. Mm-hmm. And, we dropped, and we dropped points yesterday. It's pretty mm-hmm. ironic. Loads of teams are going to drop points at this Christmas period because it's so many games and so many, like, four, game, four games in like seven days. That's a that's a lot for players. Uh, even at, even at th- third tier, it's still a lot. Like, even Premier League would be moaning. Yeah, true. Even even the Premier League teams would be moaning because of that many games in so many days. Mm. But they just do it. I don't know how, but that's. I mean, that's, you've got to grind out these games in like tough conditions. That's what I'm. That's what Darren Ferguson, my manager, has talked about in uh, interviews. You've got to grind these games out, which you have to because if you if you if you're away from home, you want and you want to get promoted, like for example, Bolton, Derby's, Portsmouth, us. You've got you like Fleetwood, for example. You. We won one nil. We grinded it out. We dominated them, but we grinded it out. We got a clean sheet. And if you want, if you want to get promoted, you have got to get them one nil wins away from home. Like your small clubs, like you yeah. got your, your Burton, your, you know, them, them clubs. Yeah, that's even, Barnes, even Barnsley could be in the playoffs and pushing promotion. You got, you got, you got to grind, grind games out. Yeah, that's true. I think. Good point, and it's a fair point about as well. You know, when you go to structures where no disrespect, you know, like your Cheltenham's and like what you said, Via, your Fleetwoods and that, Burton's, you've got to. I think sometimes it's the result rather than performance. It's always pleasing to get performance and a result, but like I said, if you'll go away and you get a 1 0 win away at Fleetwood, you take that and just get back and you've got the points on board. So it's a fair point, but and I think where we are at minute now, just crystal ball time. Because uh, we're already doing predictions about that game, but crystal ball time. 
bearing in mind in January is coming up and there might be a few additions and sort of for both Barnes and Peterborough. Can you see Peterborough is, is now stopping at top two or dropping out at top two? I can see that happening any time. Okay. I can see that happening any time, maybe to even Friday night. Mm. But no no real concerns going into January, you think or we might add a and add another one or two players to mix. I think it's got to be concerned for a posh fan. We've got to have some bit of concerns because we're gonna we're probably probably gonna lose our captain and we're probably gonna lose someone else like Edward. So it's a, it's a massive plan for us. But even even at the start of the season, if you if I said at the start of the season, would you get would, would, if we got players, I'd take it all day long. And what mm. we're second place, just remarkable, really. Yeah. I think for me as a Barnsley fan, I kind of go it's along without me to start side by two points against Stevenage. Um, like I said, touched on earlier, I think we need three players, permanent uh, signings, not loan signings, to build on back to use it as a springboard. But again, for me, are we out of top two? We're on 41. You know, Peterborough, 45, Portsmouth from 49. You know, aren't there's still plenty of games to go for. But it's like what you just touched on there. Parts and flows, yard rule. So again, you, you, you had a picture for win yesterday and woof, you've got there's that bit of the gap breaking. It, and, mm, mm. It, 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 it don't take much of it. And especially, like I said as well, fixtures coming up weekend, midweek, week and midweek and it don't take long. Get get about two or three wins on board there and who knows, you, you're overlapped. So it's, 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 it's as easy as dropping a nap really. So, Fair comment, Matt. So, mm. thanks for people what's watching. I want to take my time out and uh, thank uh, Jacob for joining me uh, on the, over this Christmas period. Um, Jacob's gone for a, a Portsmouth win. I've gone for a draw. Oh, <laughs> I'm praying just, everything it's a draw, at least a draw. <laughs> just letting Barnes fans know it's a 13th minute clap for all of our keepers. Dad's passed away, so just letting you know. If any on, on, on 13th minute? If any Barnsley fans don't know that, and if you're going to the game, I'd imagine you are. Yep, I'll share that as well, mate. I'll put it on my Twitter and everything like that. Or oh, X for call it now, but I always call it yeah. Twitter. Uh, so, yeah, anybody what is watching, I'll also put it in the, on the, in the feed and everything like that. 13th minute clap uh, for uh, Peterborough in reflection and pay respects. Uh, so, again, I'll spread all that all viral and get that done for you, Jacob, as well, for, on behalf of Peterborough as well. Um, so, yeah, ever. Good, you know, if you can rest of your week and it's going to be another travel down for Barnsley fans to Port, uh, to Portsmouth. I've got Portsmouth, I've got all tables up here. I'm going back in the forest to Peterborough. Uh, so have a safe journey going to Peterborough on Friday. Um, I'll be one we can come back with some kind of result. Uh, be nice to win, but take into account we're going to Peterborough and run bare on. So if you come back with a draw, it's even you know, I'll take that all day long now. But yeah, Jacob, thanks for joining me, mate. Really do appreciate you. Um, you please like, subscribe and share. Let us know your comments below, score predictions, everything like that. And don't forget the 13th minute uh, clap in respect for Peterborough. One thing left to say, you Reds. <laughs>